You know, it's funny, you mentioned Portlandia a minute ago, and I feel like it'd be one thing to be on Saturday Night Live for that long, but it wouldn't be until you owned or had ownership of your own sketch show to sort of really get the perspective of why things work or don't. Yeah. Because I often wondered, after doing Saturday Night Live for so long, mm -hmm. what's the itch he's still scratching with sketch on Portlandia? And then I thought, well, maybe it's by creating it on your own, it's a totally different feeling. Yeah, so... Um because SNL is so big, right? It's a different thing if someone says to me, "Hey, SNL." It's like kind of like Rolling Stone magazine. Great publication. The institution's but bigger than the. It's bigger, yeah. yeah I, remember, so I remember thinking at the time that I just want something that resembles um, uh, the record, uh, the sort of discography of either Talking Heads or The Police. I like that because they they really both those bands ended. You wanted to have the indie rock experience of sketch comedy. Yeah. Yes. And how did that sort of... And there's nothing against SNL, it's just so that no. at least, you know, it's like a... Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. At the, it, I, I also feel like as, as the years went on with SNL, you became more specific to you in the sketches you presented. Mm -hmm. And the example I think of is the sketch, it was the punk rock band reunion at the wedding. Yeah. I sort of see that with you, that, that there's been this learning curve of becoming more and more specific to your likes, your desires, your, your weirdo-ness of what you discovered with John Waters of you can pull the entertainment towards you rather than having to fit in with the entertainment. You know what I mean? Yes. I also maybe was, you know, had found enough humility to be able to fig find a way for that punk rock sketch to work. Whereas if I had written that, so yes, you're right and um, also took the years of trust from Lorne and, and the writers to be like, okay, obviously I, I have good intentions with these sketches. Right. You've also got to credit SNL for doing that too. I mean, how did they know that that would have worked? Um, that that sketch would have worked. Right. Um, and I will say that I'm sure over the years, from learning how to write at that show, I figured out, hopefully, a way for that sketch to work on the show. If, had it been early on in my career there, it might have been not the right sketch. Right. But that sketch is like my love letter to, to life. That's like my love letter to punk rockers everywhere. And it's a very specific, like it's, I'm, I can't believe it exists. And it's a, it was a real lucky break. And yeah. Out of all my time at, S, at SNL, that's the thing I'm so glad I got to do. Is that true? It's Because it's actually a love letter also to my record collection. It's like, if my record collection was alive, I was like, guys, I made something for you. Well, when you say it was my love letter to my life, it, it really does bring home how you, you went on this journey to kind of like discover who you were, and then you kind of almost ended up back in the same place. Yeah, because I didn't get into that stuff just so that it could just be my teenage years. I, I made a life packed with those bands. Right. I wasn't like, this is my teenage years and I'll grow out of this. No, 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 no. My, I have a pact with all those people, and with John Waters, and that stays alive all the time. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you wanna see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm gonna give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out.